So I'm Chris. First of all, I'm getting very excited and passionate about these topics. So I start to speed up my speaking language and talking very fast, very fast, very fast. So if you find yourself not understanding me anymore, um, please tell so. Raise the hand, say, too fast, too fast, slow down, slow down. And then I will realize that I might be too excited about everything. Second of all, I'm not using a mic because I suck at mics. So um, I will talk loud like this. If you feel that I'm too quiet or too loud, please also let me know, OK? Help me a little bit. As I said before, we end this together, so we will have a little bit of interactivity. I was promised some sticky notes. We didn't get them. But uh, I hope you have some notes, paper. We can um, work stuff together. We have this at least. And today, we're going to find out um, together why so many people say we should do Agile. And so many people tell, to tell you about Agile. I see two philosophies, two ways into that. One is for your organization yourself, where you think, of, why should I do Agile? And one is also um, how to communicate that to your team, okay, if you decided to do Agile. So we right away start with the interactivity. And that means you have like three minutes um, with your neighbor, or maybe if you're three in one seat row, maybe discuss together or self-organize yourself. <laughs> um, and what do you think? Why should we do that? Discuss with your neighbors. OK? Three minutes enough? Yeah, I think so. I think it's too long anyway. <laughs> uh, write, write your findings down, okay? Write your findings down. Find a common agreement and write it down okay. somewhere. <laughs> That's very interesting. So we can't take everything. I think we have some very um, interesting parts, which I would see they are all results from Agile, where Agile can support. We know that if you do it wrong, it would happen as well. <laughs> so of course, that's one, uh, one point. And we have very various reasons, right? So we have corporation team reasons. We have reasons financially in nature. We have reasons for better products. We have reasons to be just flexible in general. So for example, when I would be asked, why do you do Agile? I would say, OK, because the world is just too complex to be dependent on one plan ahead of a year or two years, right? The globalization, internet, everything, the world is too complex to have one mind planning down the whole year. So there are very various reasons. So everybody here agrees we should do Agile, right? Yeah. OK. To answer that question, we have the next game. Maybe we first, before we say, because we have different reasons of why we should do Agile, we should first understand what is Agile. Three minutes, same concept. For me, Agile is that four values. Nothing. One, twelve principles. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Responding to change over following a plan. Now, the issue with values is they are not concrete. They are not working instructions. They are not really a framework. <coughs> they're not really a process. Or they're not focusing just on one part. They're not telling you what to do to do that. They are more like a mindset. Thank you, <laughs> guys. Right? It's more like a mindset. OK, you embrace something. You embrace values. You embrace individuals and interactions. Uh, I, I cannot say, OK, make a working software. Now you're agile, right? <laughs> no, it's a value that makes it coarse, OK? And um, this is then also manifested more a little bit in these 12 agile principles. I will not go through all of them. You find them on agilemanifesto.net or .org. Um, you can write that down here in case you don't know it yet. 
من معنی فستو .r but there were two principles and I don't know that I'm hot and I don't want to say anything wrong I really like the most is build projects around motivated individuals give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the work done that's one I really think it's very important when you start to adopt Agile into your organization. Okay, you have motivated individuals, or you should have, and you should should give them the environment and the support they need, and then all these pieces fall together in one way, right? And the second one is the best architectures, requirements, and designs um, emerge from self-organizing teams. Now, if you're adopting Agile in your organization, and you're saying, now you are self-organized now, is this self-organization? It's not really self-organization, because telling someone to self-organize is not really, it's against the principle of self-organization. Okay, so you have to, of course you cannot just let them do as well. You have to give them the guidelines, right? But this is how most of the people actually communicating. So they are saying, we have to do Agile, so we are better. We are. But that's a long paper. So we have everybody involved in an effective way, or we have more money, or we have more feedback. So that's how you people communicate. Now, this is also a way of just pushing something on top, which would be against self-organizing teams, and would be against trust them to get to to get something done. But there are ways, of course, on how um, you can communicate with your team so you will have an opportunity that they share the way you are sharing in the agile way. And before I can tell you from what this actually, or where this is actually based is, I have a question, who is married? Oh, a lot. Uh, how did you choose your wife or your husband? You don't need an answer. <laughs> because sometimes it just feels good, right? It's not because she can cook or she's a good looking woman or whatever. It's sometimes it's just a good feeling when you're together with her, right? So you start to uh, rationalize later things which you had a feeling in some point were the right feeling. And Simon Sinek, if you know him, I come a little bit closer, closer to him on the next slide. Um, says actually most of our decisions, the decisions are based in the guts and less in the brains. So you can have been, been convinced by this nice TV set from the sales guy at the, at the, at the uh, electronics set, but when you come home, it doesn't feel right because you like the other one more. It felt better to have the other one more. And this is how organizations um, actually maybe make mostly a mistake in their communication. And who knows the golden circle? You know it? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can leave. <laughs> okay. So this is the golden circle from Simon Sinek, okay? And this is what most people say in organizations. We have to do Agile. We do it by hiring an external coach like ThoughtWorks. <laughs> and then uh, we are having everybody involved in an effective way. But with this, it's not very inspiring. It's also like, like com uh, normal organizations communicate in their marketing, okay? So a lawyer firm that says, we are a legal firm. We have to guys lawyers, hire us. That's how you do marketing, right? You say where, where you, what you do, where you actually better than your competitor, and you have a call to action. Now, companies who want to inspire, they work the other way around. Okay, so they come first with the reason. Okay, why they, why this company exists, or why, uh, why you exist yourself. Okay, so if you, um, if you take Facebook for example, they could say we are a social media platform, we have the best technology, sign up. Or they can say we believe that everybody on this world should be connected with each other. We do this by a great technology called Facebook, 
and we are a social media platform, we are a messenger, we have internet.org. So what you do is actually not more important, not any more important, because they communicate why they are doing it. And this is a very reason it's easier to connect with someone if you share the same values and beliefs. If you're traveling to another country, for example, you're traveling to New York, and you walk across the street and say, hey, you're German, right? Yeah, you're German. You're the best friends because you share the same values and beliefs. If you're doing this in Munich, everybody will look at you. Yeah, of course I'm German. <laughs> you know, this is what, how you can connect to the values, to the same values and beliefs. That's how you can communicate to your team as well, right? So you communicate why you think. It's very individual. Some people want to make more money through Agile. Okay, so you have to find your why. Yeah, you have to find why do you want it to yourself? What do you want to have a, for a result out of this? Then you communicate it with your team. And what you will find are people who are much more motivated when they have the same values and beliefs. And they will start to embrace that change themselves. And then, what's the timing? Oh, no. Uh, you communicate to the team. So if you're living something, what you're really trying to tell, which is Agile, is everything about, it's much more to find like-minded people. One of the most impressive moments was for me when I met Mary and Tom Poppendieck, the authors from Lean Software Development, I don't know, 99 or something? They wrote a book uh, uh, about Lean Software Development. So they lived it by the value. So as a, if I can give you this short story, but uh, we, we, they, they were in Vietnam, and we said thank you to them for coming, so we gave them a nice present in a very beautiful bag, had a Vietnamese coffee, Vietnamese tea inside, and one of our organizers handed over to Tom Poppendick. Tom Poppendick takes this bag, looks inside, takes this bag, looks inside, takes out the coffee, takes out the tea, makes uh, um, uh, folds the, the bag, give, gives it back. It's waste, sorry, we don't need it. So that's lean, right? You just heard. That's removing waste, uh, a part of lean. Uh, another example, short after, they got flight tickets, business class, right? So they get the flight tickets in a nice envelope, what you get in business class, take out two tickets, throw away the envelope. You don't need that, it's waste. That's living it, right? And then it's much more, if you, talk, um, um, if you talk with these guys, it's much more what you believe also, if they are believing this themselves. So the question is not, why should we do Agile? The question is, why should we be Agile? Because Agile are values, Agile is our beliefs, our principles. It's not a process. Scrum can be described as an Agile method, or XP has Agile tools, or Kanban is an Agile tool. Yeah. But Agile is just four values and 12 principles. I'm a little bit faster than I thought. Did I talk too fast? I talked too fast. OK, should I repeat everything a bit slowly? Uh, we have the videos. Maybe we can record them. <laughs> now maybe we start then with questions and answers, q and I wanted anyway to have an extended interaction on questions. Yeah, please, thank you. <laughs> how do you see that Agile is affecting how the management is up? Um, I would say management is affecting the way people are being made. <laughs> um, as we heard before, management is an invention from the last 120 years. Before we didn't have management, we have still self-organization on the streets. So self-organization is actually in human nature. So basically, I would say that man management is affecting how people work. Uh, more than Agile is affecting management. Does this answer to your question? It uh, kind of <laughs> took a long way around. Maybe I can have another discussion. Or do you have another idea? I mean, I, we can have a discussion on that one. <laughs> I, yeah? I, I discussed that with uh, sometimes we see this in a circle. Uh, I don't know, sort of, uh, you know, I like the ball going somewhere there is improvement and there's yeah. feedback and that stuff. So even management, we talk about uh, giving feedback to um, the person who's involved in the project mm -hmm. continuously during the, each project, not only at the end of the year, the performance review, mm -hmm. but actually how to each project lessons learned, you know, feedback to individuals, what you really need to do, what have we done well. And, and that's kind of this agile mentality that we always continue to give feedback to each other how we can improve. So if 
basically would apply to the organization would be a, a scrum to the organization would be like an organizational retrospective. Perhaps. Yeah. For based this on the products that you're working. So yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I see it sometimes very difficult, but because the manager is usually the guy who pays your uh, pays your salary, right? And um, it's better in Western countries, but I'm living now in Vietnam. I know sometimes then honesty could be a problem, openness. You know that someone is not honest. I have this problem with one company I'm working with at the moment, where people are not af are afraid to give to their manager honest feedback. They give it to me. You know, and then I have to or kind of scrum master like give it further, right? So this this kind of could be always a, a problem. But I say of course the direct feedback. The problem is as soon as the manager is in the room, the manager who pays the salaries, there's always some disconnect between the team. I always feel that when I had this. There were always different retrospectives when the management was in the room or when the management was not in the room. I think time's up. <laughs> Time's up, sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.